Hey everybody, welcome back to Cineflex. My name is Manny. And I'm Juan. Today we're back with another movie review. This time we're going to be reviewing Black Klansman, directed by Spike Lee. Hey everybody, so in light of what's happening right now in the world, um, it's very sad. But during these times, there's been a lot of light shed on certain movies, um, TV shows, you know, things like on Netflix. Uh, I think one of them was mentioned was when they when they hear us or when they know about us. Do you know what, you know what I'm talking about? Well, there's a bunch of lists of movies that we should see. Uh, just Mercy, just to be more informed like about suggestions. Um, yeah, yeah, what's happening and um, just a little bit more on like Black history. Um, and one movie that I've been wanting to see um, that pop up was Black Klansman by Spike Lee. And Spike Lee has been the director that has been that shed light on a lot of um, issues and about inequality and uh, racial issues among the black community. Um, a lot of his movies pretty much um, shed light on that. And Malcolm X, um, I think, uh, do the right thing. I haven't seen a lot of his movies, but there, this is one of them that I um, wanted to see. Um, so finally got a chance. We, oh, we figured what, what better time than now to, to watch a movie like this where a African American is infiltrating the Ku Klux Klan, and this was a true story. I know in the beginning when you watch this movie, it says this is some real shit that happened or something like that. <laughs> and I mean, I, I'll admit it; I didn't know this was a, a true story. But when I saw that, I looked it up, and it was based on the book. There was a real Ron um, Sterling. Sterling. Stallworth. Stallworth. Ron. There, there was Ron Stallworth who infiltrated the KKK. And um, I think they made, they, they, like the movie suggested they had him keep quiet about it uh, for some time. And I think he wrote a book, which then Spike Lee decided to adapt it to the big screen. Cool. So in this movie, um, do you know who that, uh, the leading role is? The uh, actor? One. The actor? Yeah. His name is John no, David I, I, Washington. Oh. Yeah, huh? John David Washington. That's the Washington's son. Denzel's wife? Denzel Washington? Yeah, Denzel Washington. That's his oh, son. I didn't know it was him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either. And he's going to be the lead role in the Christopher Nolan movie, Tenet. That's yeah, the same Yeah, way. Tenet. <laughs> yeah, I didn't recognize him uh, uh, in that. I mean... In the movie? I didn't yeah, recognize him. I don't know his work that all that well, but from what I saw in the trailer from the Christopher Nolan movie, I couldn't... It, did, it just didn't click for me in my head. Like, the, the voice seemed a little bit different, and... I, I mean, hats to him. I mean, he really embodied this character, or both characters, because they both, I yeah. mean, the Chris, it looks like it's going to be good. But yeah, it's based on, so this movie is about uh, Ron Stallworth, uh, played by uh, John David Washington, and he works for the, which police department was it? Colorado, Colorado's something Springs. Yes, I work for the Colorado Springs. The Colorado Springs uh, Police Department. So he decides to investigate. Yeah. Uh, well, first they had him investigate the Black Panthers, right? That's what they wanted him mm. to infiltrate. That's when, kind of where the movie, that's like the first part, of, well, a little bit of the song. beginning. They have him um, pretty much go under, not really undercover, but just to join the, one of these Black Panther um, meetings and have a mic because they think they might be some sort of a, a threat. Um, as far as like creating some sort of um, attack on towards uh, certain people, and that was that was that was a really good scene. I thought that when that meeting, I mean, it was, I thought it was powerful. I mean, you you actually feel like you're in the audience there. Um, I thought that Spike Lee did a good job there, making us feel like we're in there in that meeting because you see him. Uh, forget which actor it is, but that is the actor who played a uh, Doctor Dre straight out of Compton. The guy who was speaking up there in the Black Panther meeting, and then you get these these shots of these people looking up at him. Um, it's just a black screen, and it's just their their faces looking at them. And it, I don't know, it kind of helped me mm-hmm. help you feel like you're in that scene. So I thought that was cool. And then, yeah, so that's when the movie starts off. And then, and so he decides on his own to go infiltrate the KKK um, by making it seem like he's a a white American over the phone. Um, but then he makes the mistake of saying his actual name. Uh, so, but he, instead of but instead of him actually physically being 
in these KKK meetings because he can, because he's obviously, because he's black, um, they get um, pretty much Kylo Ren to go infiltrate the KKK and pretend he's Ron Stallworth, uh, Adam Driver. Adam Driver, that's the name. Which is another, he did, I thought he did a real excellent job at the at this role too. I mean, he had to embody, well, he didn't really try to embody a Ron Stallworth character, but he just pretty much had to roll with the punches and I thought Adam Driver carried it, carried it very well. Well, yeah, like you said, I feel like the here. characters, like the characters, uh, special, well, especially those two, the main ones, they did a really good job at kind of showing us, I feel a lot of like, how do you say like, because there was a lot of moments that I saw that made me feel like maybe them in those times were struggling with these with these things because obviously like ron uh for obvious reasons but um the other guy i think his name was flip right flip or that's just the nickname flip, yeah philip philip his Phillip. name was philip i think yeah and uh because they show us that scene where he's like like obviously he's white but he's jewish but he's never really <clears throat> like thought about it himself. But that's something that now that he's in this situation, he's starting to like realize how like how what that means in this world of like white supremacy, even. And right. even someone like like him, who he is a white guy, he is still hated by those people. Like, and then like it, I don't know. I feel like it it shows us that struggle between like their own minds, like, you know, like Ron is a police man, but when he's in that, uh, in that meeting, I feel like he's struggling between being that cop that those people hate and also being a black man. And he, he is also in support for them, you know? So I thought they did a really good job. That was like the main thing I liked, like their acting in, in the movie, like, how they portray these characters. And also, I mean, the movie itself, like really like sheds light on this, um, on this issue and how intense it was in those times, like how like out there it was and like, and yet it was like a normal thing. Like you wouldn't really, like now it's more of like a, something that's kept low key, you get me? Like something that's like, it's not really in the forefront, but now it's like, except for like, you know, the times that people record things and things like that. But other than that, it's not like as obvious, but it's still there. But it's crazy to think that there was a time when it was like, just out there. Like you just knew that that was a thing. That yeah, was an it was, issue. yeah that was, it was the norm, I guess, back then, yeah. especially cause there was no cameras. There's nobody had iPhones. So we, we see that scene with that, that asshole cop. Um, and he's like has that the girl Patrice, Patrice, yeah, and her and her crew, and they they stopped her for for no reason. And they're and harassing her, and you have to imagine. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure like stuff like that happens today. I mean, you've seen. I mean, what's happening right now in the world? But back then, I'm sure that happened plenty of times, and there was no way of knowing it because nobody. There was no witnesses. There was just. Cops just turned the other cheek a lot more back then. There was just no way of knowing, and I'm sure that happened a lot more than um, than we think yeah. it did, or we wanted to, we wanted to think it did. Uh, and yeah, and like Ron, a... huh? I would say uh, even like within the um, the police department, Ron had to like prove himself. I guess. Um, I mean, the way they treated him when he was in that mail room or the records room, um, you can tell yeah. he just just wanted to, he wanted to actually make a difference. But I thought they did a good job of him showing that you know what I'm I'm still yeah I'm a cop I'm with these people that have treated us wrong, but I still want to like do something I want to because he believes in justice still, but he also believes in you know liberating the black community and fighting for civil rights, and he believes he can do that as a cop as well. Yeah, there's one line they said like this guy says the other guy in his team the other the older guy. I forgot because I don't even remember his name. Yeah, um, not Adam, not Adam, not Caleb, but the other guy that was in the room. The other guy, yeah. 
Uh, I'm not sure if he had like, says in the movie. I mean, could have done without him. <laughs> yeah, but he was part of the team. But but yeah, he wasn't like as much like in the movie as the other two. But right. um, there's a line he says where and uh, when Ron is telling him like like how, what do you guys put up with him like with the other cop, the racist cop, and he's all like. I forgot what he says, but he's like, um, like he's one of us, like good or bad, you know, he's still one of us. Like, and I feel like that's probably uh, like, and that's is probably what a lot of cops think. Like, and you see it a lot, you know, like the boys in blue and, you know, it's like, like they all see each other as like, he's part of us. So maybe, you know, cut him some slack or things like that. But so that's probably what a lot of people thought. A lot of cops thought, of other cops that were probably doing something bad. Yeah, I'm sure there's regardless of whether he's doing something good or bad, he's still one of us. So it's like Yeah, I'm sure there's there's, there's I'm sure there's a feeling of brotherhood when you're in a, when you're in the police department. I mean, as well as like yeah. sisterhood, I guess, because there's um males and females, but I'm, I'm sure there's camaraderie feeling and then people feel like they um they just need to like stick together, which is good. I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to ha- have that camaraderie. You just have to you know, still point out when bad things happen, but we don't want to get into much of police issues. Yeah. Um, but you know, the Patrice, uh, the woman, I thought I wanted to see a little bit more of her in the movie. You know who uh, she is? Did you catch who she was? Where you've seen her before? I saw, I saw right now who she is, but yeah, I didn't know. I know uh, who she, seen her. Uh, she was in Spider-Man Homecoming. She plays. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. Yeah. Yeah. The girl he likes. Yeah, I thought she did well here. I thought she played an important role, but I just it was an important role, but I think a little bit more should have been shown with her. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is based her. off a book. Not everybody. Uh this is based off a book, so I don't know how much she's in the book or anything, but um yeah, I liked how in the movie how going back to what I said when he they told him to go and infiltrate the the Black Panther, just sit on the meeting because they think they might be, you know, violent. But then yeah. we see that in the at the end of the movie, the ones that are violent is actually the KKK, because and then how they act, and then the bomb that goes off at the end. Um, but yeah, even at the at the ending, when we see the cop um, not believe Ron um, Stallworth because he's on top of the older white lady uh, who who's the one who planted the bomb, and he pretty much has her pinned down and ready to be arrested. But then the cops show up and they don't, they didn't believe him at all. They believe the, the white lady and they put his hands behind his back. Yeah. I and mean, he's saying he's an undercover cop. And it doesn't get resolved until Adam Driver comes up and he's like, he's a fucking undercover cop, you idiots. And he throws him his back. Yeah. And now, you know, he needed the white guy to save him, I guess. That's yeah. what, pretty much the only thing that could have saved him during this time. But yeah, I mean, some a lot, a lot of part of the movies, um, it's not a fast-paced movie. I thought it, it moves a little bit. It's kind of like at a, at a constant speed, like like bobbing. It, it doesn't like it. Is, it's nothing fast-paced. It's nothing. There's not a lot of action in it. But I thought it did. Uh, it has some comedic aspects to it. So that kind of like what um, wakes you up sometimes in the movie. Because with a movie like with this pacing, I think it needs something. And right here, it had like some comedic aspects to it. I mean, when he's talking on the yeah. phone, it's going to be quiet. And then the way he talks to David Duke. <laughs> and, then, um, and, you know, so once the movie's over, he kind of, I think Spike Lee wanted to uh, kind of mirror how um, there's certain issues that are still going on today or still how the community on. feels today uh, based on what happened. Um, he used the Charlottesville, I think, incident in this movie. Um, pretty much just showing an issue. I mean, I bet... If this movie was coming out next year, I'm sure he would use clips from what's happened this year in this movie to mirror what's happening. And it, yeah. I can just imagine just walking, uh, watching that in theaters and walking away. I'm sure it would leave me feeling unsettling, um, which it kind of did. Because in the movie, you know, it's a happy ending, right? Um, sort of. I mean, you would take they make them stay quiet about and they want about this whole infiltration and they want to throw away the records on it. But then they show that big scene at the end and then you kind of feel like eh and I think that was the kind of thing he was trying to um, message yeah, they wanted to like wanted really to make- show that it was still going on because 
even before that, they show that little clip where someone knocks at his door and he goes outside and the cross is burning. So kind of signaling, like, you might have done what you did, but, you know, we're still here. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, you know what? Just reminded me, because at the beginning of the movie, you know, he showed clips of Gone, the movie Gone with the Wind. Um, and he, he mentioned a lot of other movies. And I remember he mentioned one called uh, Birth of a Nation or This Nation's Birth or something. I remember learning Birth about that movie uh, in my U.S. history class, my AP U.S. history class in high school. And pretty much that movie is a big deal. I mean, it's in the National Registry of like important movies of all time because of just the way it was filmed in camera. But it's really, really racist. <laughs> I mean, they showed pretty much the KKK and they didn't hire any. I don't know if they hired if 100 percent of, of the people in there were white, but the majority of the people that were playing um, African-Americans was just in blackface. And this was during, I think I want to say the 30s, um, maybe a little bit before that, because I think the movie is in, in silent. And it pretty much, after when that movie came out, that pretty much, um, it gave rise again to the KKK. Um, I think the movie was about like protecting people, protecting the white people, and then that's why the KKK was brought up to protect the white people from black people now that they were free. So I thought that was cool. He he showed some movies that are like, people may not have heard of. and But then again, we find important because of the significance of the way it was filmed. And then he mentioned some uh, 1970s uh, black exploitation films when he's talking to Patrice. And I thought that was cool. I mean, he's he, he, pretty much he's showing, he's like giving shout outs to like certain cultures, cultural movies. In, the, in that one scene. So, yeah, I appreciated that. Yeah, but all in all, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I thought um, it was a great watch. I, I feel like I definitely would watch it again in the future. I don't know if I want to see that ending again because I don't want to end up feeling that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's important to feel that way, but I mean, for a movie, I just want to watch the movie, enjoy it. Don't don't make me feel unsettled. Unless I'm like watching it with someone who's never watched it before and then, then I'd let that last scene play. Yeah, but it was good. I liked it. <clears throat> and like you said, it has that comedic aspect to it. So it kind of alleviates you at times, like makes yeah. it a little more easy to consume, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, That's what it is. Yeah, a little more easier to consume because you're watching it and then you're like, it needs something. It needs a little, because I mean, if the action didn't happen, then you're not going to just put in an action scene, but you can add a little comedy here and there. Yeah. And, yeah, that's what it made it a little bit more upbeat. But cool. Those were our thoughts on Black Klansman by uh, Spike Lee. If you haven't watched it, give it a give it a chance. Give it a give it a watch because it's definitely good. I think it won best. It won an Oscar. I don't know if it was for the screenwriting or for something, but I think it was for the screenplay. Sorry, for the screenplay. Yeah. But yeah, we're gonna end up watching um, other movies that pretty much shed light on certain issues that are mirroring what's going on in the world right now, especially. I mean, we're still in quarantine, so it just it seems it's weird. It's weird that we're still in quarantine. <laughs> it just feels like a way of life now. Either way, yeah, that's where those were our thoughts on the movie. If you've seen it, let us know what you thought about it below. What did you guys feel about the ending, that last scene he put it in, he put in the movie? Um, give us your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, guys. See you.